I'd like to read some of this story in Acts 27 and bring you a message on this story. These stories are put in the Bible so that you and I can learn from them, benefit from them. And I want to preach this morning on this subject. Something everybody has and nobody wants. Something everybody has and nobody wants. And that is the, it, you know what it is? It's trouble. So the message this morning is for everybody here who's going through some trouble. Got any trouble? Got any rivers you think are uncrossable? Got any mountains you can't tunnel through? God specializes in things impossible. And I'm here to tell you good news today. The Lord put this story. Here's a great preacher, and they had a, some, a big mess happen. And I'm going to show you how to get through it when you're going through a mess. I've been through a few myself, and first time or two you go through a bad mess, you think, oh, boy, uh, I ain't going to get th This is going to do me in right here. And then you look back, and you see God brought you through it. And you get stronger and grow. So let's read this story this morning. I'm going to make a few points about it, and then we'll go and get back in here tonight. I do want you to be here tonight. It's very important. Don't miss tonight's service. If you only come to church on Sunday morning, you know you're, you're here 33% of the time. That's one-third. And that's not enough, y'all. That's not enough. I don't mean to fuss at you, but you need to be fussed at. Worse than that. And so get in here. Uh, tonight, 6 o'clock, bring somebody with you. The Lord will bless you for it. Acts chapter 27, look at verse number 12. I'm going to read a lot, so follow along with me. And because the haven was not commodious to winter in, the more part advised to depart thence also, if by any means they might attain to Phoenice and there to winter, which is an haven of Crete, and lieth sat toward the southwest and northwest. And when the south wind blew softly, supposing they had obtained their purpose, loosing it, they sailed close by Crete. This is a, a ship they're in. But not long after there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Eurocladon. And when the ship was caught, we could not bear up into the wind. We let her drive. First case in the Bible of a woman driver. Look what happened. She hit the rocks and running under a certain island, which is called Claudia. We had much work to come by the boat. Bondo, uh, insurance road went up, uh, bending out the fenders. See, I'm going to preach the Bible whether y'all like it or not, so you can just make up your mind. I'm just kidding. Uh, but anyway, verse 17. And when they had taken up, they used helps, undergirding the ship, and fearing lest they should fall into the quicksand, strake sail, and so were driven. Verse 18. And we being exceedingly tossed with a tempest, the next day they lightened the ship. And the third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. It got so scary, they started throwing stuff out. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. In other words, they got, hold your finger there, they got so scared that they thought, we are not going to make it. Have you ever been to the place where you think, I'm not going to make it. This is going to do me in. A divorce, a disease, a heart attack, cancer, trouble in your marriage or in your home, and it hurts so bad, you just think, I can't make it through this. I'm in trouble. I'm having trouble, preacher. That's what they were doing here. It said, they said they give up hope they're even going to be saved. But look at verse 21. But after long abstinence, he'd been somewhere praying, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer. 
For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ship. He said, we're going to lose this ship. It's busted. It's tore up. But we're all going to be saved. For there stood by me this night the angel of God. And that angel of God is the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, you know, look at the next part of that verse. Whose I am and whom I serve. That's a picture of the Lord there, brother. And saying, fear not, Paul. Thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it would told me. Now, for time's sake, skip on over there to verse number 40. And when they had taken up the anchors, they committed themselves unto the sea and loosed the rudder bands and hoist up the mainsail to the wind and made toward shore. And falling into a place where two seas met, they ran the ship aground. They just run it right straight into that little piece of land there. <coughs> and the fore part stuck fast and remained unmovable. And the hinder part was broken with the violence of the waves. And the soldiers' counsel was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim out and escape. But the centurion willing to save Paul, kept them from their purpose and commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land. And the rest, some on boards, some on broken pieces of the ship, and so it came to pass they escaped all safe to land. My, my, what a story. He said that ship was going up this way, that way, and the back end of it broke off. And they wound up just getting a hold of pieces of the boat and floating and grabbing a hold of anything they could get a hold of. But every one of them made it safe to land. I'm preaching on trouble. Trouble. That word trouble comes from a little instrument. They uh, used to have this little instrument called a tribulum. And a tribulum is something that they took when they'd take hay, uh, uh, wheat out to beat it and they'd take that thing and beat that wheat and separate the chaff from the wheat and it's called the tribulum. That's where tribulation comes from. That little instrument called a tribulum. And that wheat got beat. Sometimes in your Christian life, you feel like you're just getting beat to death. It may not be physically. It may be trials. It may be temptation. It may be some kind of trouble or sickness you're going through, but you're going to have trouble. If you know a man who's over 40 and has never had no trouble, I, I want you to introduce me to him. I'd like to shake his hand. He's a rare individual. And the older you get, the more you realize it's not if you're going to have trouble and problems. It's when and where and what they are. Everybody in here this morning, you're either having trouble or you just came out of trouble or you're getting ready to go in some trouble. The Bible said all the way through it, Job 14 and verse 1, man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. Now just get this through your head. You're not going to live for God and not have problems. It is impossible. You're not going to live in this world without having trouble. The Bible said over there in... Um, in, in Job chapter 5 and verse 7, that man is born into trouble as the sparks fly upward. You know what that means? Man is born into trouble as the sparks fly upward. If you build a thousand fires, sparks are going to fly up. That's how sure it is that you're going to have trouble. Now you're sitting there thinking, well, I got everything and I'm, I'm healthy and I eat right and I try to make, pay my, and I got financially secure and all that. It don't matter what you do, trouble's coming your way. I mean, it's coming. You can't cover all the bases. You can't stop things from happening that's going to, and about the time you think you've got this little wall around you that nothing can hurt you or protect you, something will happen to tear it all down. Right, ladies and gentlemen, that's what happened here in this story. The Apostle Paul, God's man, he didn't have sin in his life. He wasn't backslid. He was out there with a bunch of people, and a storm came up on this ship. And it'll come in your life, 
and it'll come in my life. I've been through a few storms. Every, every time, just the other day, just the other day, and uh, uh, my girls are here this morning, carries it home with a sick one, uh, but uh, uh, just the other day, I was thinking, Man, we've got along pretty good here lately. I'm scared to think like that. I, I, I was thinking, everybody in the family's saved. Everybody in the family's going to church. Thank the Lord. God's been good to us. Ain't nothing bad happening about... Fa-. And I come myself thinking, buddy, you better look out. I'm, I'm paranoid. I'm gun shy. And, and you will be too after you live a few years. Because if you think you can get through this life without having trouble, buddy, you got another thing coming. It comes to everybody. It comes to everybody. Now, I ain't never been on but one boat where it was really scary. And that was a long time ago. And we was down there off the coast of Florida. And it was taking us from one part of a, of a to an island or something. I forgot even what we was doing on that thing. And that boat was uh, about as big as this one section of pews right here. About maybe 20, 25 feet that way. About uh, 60 or 70 feet that way. And we got out there and a storm come on. And we were sitting around the edges like boat, like, look like benches around the edges. And I was, we were sitting around there and a bunch of people, about 50, 60, 70 people on there. And all of a sudden, that thing started doing like this and like this. That was the scariest feeling. I've been in airplanes when you had turbulence and you're flying all of a sudden, it just drops like that. That's a scary feeling. I, I mean, uh, have you ever been in one and all of a sudden you think, whoop, 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 and you think, Lord, 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 help me, Lord, help me. You start praying. I mean, you start saying, oh, God, oh, God. I was in one one time and it, it went down like that, and these older women went, woo, like that behind me, like, like that, a heart attack, and that's a scary feeling. But this boat, the wind was blowing, and it started going up like this. I mean, it's almost like a turnover. And you look down, there's the water. And then you go whoosh, up like that. And over there's the water. And then you go up like that. And there's the water. I said, Lord, if I ever get off of here, I'll never get on one of these again. I'm scared. I mean, you confess sins. Right? You pray. You make promises. I mean, it's scary. It's scary. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it, you, you get in times like that and trouble is coming your way, you mark it down. Mark it down. If that's, if that's being uh, negative, make the most of it. Find out, see if I ain't right. Amen? Uh, somebody said, well, you should be more positive. Here's how positive I am. You're going to have problems. It's 100%. How's that for being positive? And brother, thank God we are going to a land one day where there'll be no trouble, where there are no problems. Glory to God where you won't get sick, where somebody won't hit you and wreck your car, or where you won't get cancer, and where you won't have death in the family. But until then, we're going to have problems in this life. Now, if you're having a problem this morning, here's what I'm going to tell you what to do. Here's how to get through it. You get through it exactly like the Apostle Paul did. I'm going to tell you how to get through your hard time. Are you in a hard spot right now? Here's what to do. Here's my advice from the Bible. Number one. Number one. Here's what he did. Trust in God. Trust in God. You say, well, that, of course, yeah. You'd be surprised how many times we try to figure out this and figure out that. Sometimes you just got to trust the Lord. And God wants us to trust Him. In verse 22, he said, There shall not be no loss of any man's life. Paul trusted in the Lord. In Psalm 18 and verse 2, David said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my strength in whom will I trust. Now, difficulty strengthen the mind just like labor and exercise strengthen the body. Uh, if, you, if you lift weights and you, got, uh, and you go to the gym, uh, what's, what's me lift this mass of steel uh, right here? And, and you do this and you do that enough. You do that enough right there. You put them big old things on the end of it like that. You see them big old guys. You know, if you do that enough, it strengthens your arm. Right? That, that work strengthens your arm. Now, difficulties and problems strengthens your mind and your faith just like that. We exercise our faith. And brother, after you've been through a few 
few battles and after you've learned how to trust the Lord and after you've, after you've seen him do it over and over and over, it strengthens your mind and your faith and you say, glory to God, hallelujah. He brought me through that first one. He brought me through that second one. The same God will take me through this one. I'm telling you, your problem didn't surprise God. What you're going through right now, it didn't take God off guard. The Lord didn't say, oh my, I didn't know that. He knew it before you was ever born. He already had your way planned out. He already had the answer made. He sees the end from the beginning. And no matter what we have to go through, learn how to trust him, he'll take you through. Amen? Trust in God. Number two, number two, ask God to help you. Ask the Lord to help you. There is nothing wrong with getting down on your knees and saying, God, I need your help. I need your guidance. Show me how to react to this. Show me what I'm supposed to do in this situation. Should I do this? Should I not do this? Should I go here? Should I not go there? Lord, help me. God, help me. Put it in my heart. You know what the Bible said? Paul, after long abstinence, he, he didn't just jump up there and start running his mouth. That old boy had been back yonder in the back of that ship praying somewhere. Have you, I don't know if you've ever been on a, on a boat. Um, it would be hard to pray on that boat when it was going like that. I've never been, uh, people always told me, they said, Danny, you'll get seasick. I went down to Fort Walton, Florida, and preached a revival. And a guy down there had a, uh, he had a, uh, a fish boat. I don't know what you call it, but anyway, that's what he did for a living. He'd leave every morning, and people would pay 35 or $40 to go out deep sea fishing, and then come, he'd stay out there about uh, four hours and come back about 2 o'clock in the evening, and uh, I was down there, and they begged me and begged me. They said, we want to take you fishing. I said, look, I'm, I'm not a fisherman. I don't care nothing about this. They said, Brother Danny, you would love it. You'd go out there, and they, they said, I know. You think you just sit there and don't catch nothing. All you got to do is throw it in there. They're that long, big old things. Ain't no, I don't know what they are. They fish that long. They said, all you got to do. And they talked me into going. I said, I have no desire to go fishing. I wouldn't give you a, a 50 cent for every fishing bowl in the world or golf club either for that matter. If everyone in the whole world wouldn't give you a dime for it. I'm just not interested in it. If you are, great, that's fine. I know uh, somebody said, uh, I, I, I'm, you know, my, my, you know, y'all know what my sport is, uh, but I'm, I, I don't like fishing. And they said, Brother Danny, please go. And I agreed to go just being nice. And I got up that morning about 95 degrees, and uh, uh, I didn't, didn't eat anything. I, was, I, I don't know what, why I didn't, but I didn't eat anything, and I was in a hurry and run. And right before I got on that boat, they said, now, we're not going to be back about 2 o'clock. I grabbed a thing of chocolate milk about that big, and I just killed. I drank that whole thing of chocolate milk. Don't get ahead of me. It's going to get bad here in a minute. And I'm telling you, I don't get car sick. I don't get uh, stomach sick. And we got out there, and I'm telling you, out there about an hour and a half. I know that's stupid. I didn't even get to, we had, you have to go 10 miles before you get to start fishing. I mean, you can't even see the, light, the land. I said, well, when are we going to fish? Bless God, you can put 10 Lake James them here and there where we've already went. Where's the fish? They said, no, they're way out there. You got to get to where you can't even see land. All of a sudden, I felt something just flip in my stomach. You know that, that feeling you get where there's like a little switch that flips. It's, you're done then, buddy. There's no reversing that thing. Finnegan, Finnegan, whatever that stuff is. That stuff, I didn't think, I'm telling you, I got sick as a dog. I'm telling you, and I, I, he said, you want to fish? I said, I don't think I want to fish. And, and we just going <laughs> You can't be still. It ain't like a car where you can pull over and stop and get some fresh air. You can't stop. What are you going to do? I was about to make my own fish bait right there with that chocolate milk. I got sick. My stomach turned upside down. I said, Lord, that's the sickest I've been in. I don't, I don't ever get, I think I've been car sick one time since I was an adult. And I got sick 
Lord, have mercy. And I wound up just laying down with my head like that. I come back. They finally brought me back. And I, th- I, I, got, I stayed, I didn't feel right till the next day. I mean, I went ahead and preached that night. And the next day, I started feeling normal. Lord, I'd never been like that in my life. And sometimes you can get in a point in life, people, when nobody else around you may not realize what you're going through. Nobody else around you may not even feel what you're feeling. But you're about to die on the inside. And you're having trouble, brother, trouble. Listen, I've been there. I've had a few trouble. And learn how to talk to God in your trouble. Now, if you're laying on a hospital bed and they got tubes running down your throat and up your nose and you're, they shooting drugs in you, it's hard to pray. But Paul, I don't guess it was easy with that boat going like this, almost turning over. He wasn't back there saying, Heavenly Father, it sure is wonderful to come into your precious presence. No, no. That thing was about to go over. I remember Paul was back there saying, Oh, God, help us, oh, God. Holding on, rain, that water hitting him in the face, everything soaking wet. But I'm telling you, glory to God, brother, he called on the Lord, and the Lord heard him and answered him. See, there'll be some, time, there'll be some things you'll go through in life that a book don't have the answer, and your education don't have the answer, and science don't have the answer. Only God can help you. You'll go through some things in your life where everybody out there, oh, I'll punch, I'll Google it, huh? okay? Google it and see if that boat calms down. Amen. Amen. You ain't gonna Google that cancer away out of your body. You're not gonna go, your, your crystal ball won't help you when some things come into your life. So this old boy one time used to take passengers across the Mississippi River on a ferry boat. Old, old man, wasn't educated, didn't know nothing. This real intelligent guy went down there. He was a professor at a college, and he came down, and he said, young man, take me to the other side, please. He got on that ferry boat, and they started to cross there, and he thought he'd strike up a conversation. He said, uh, uh, young man, have you studied science? Do you understand the science of this water and the universe? And everything, he said, no, sir, boss. Me don't know nothing about no science. I, don't, I ain't never studied no science, boss. He said, man, you done miss." Half your life. You don't know nothing about science. I can't even talk to you about halfway over there. He said, well, young man, uh, uh, what about history? Do you know anything about history? He said, no, sir. I didn't get to go to school. Don't know nothing about history. I don't know anything what you're talking about. He said, but young man, you done missed half your life. You don't know anything about history. And he said, what about math? And he went into all these things. You, done, you missed half your life. You don't know all these wonderful things. And about that time, something happened. That boat cracked, and water started going in there, and they started getting scared. And he looked at the, uh, the boy running that thing said, uh, boss, can you swim? He said, no, I never took time to learn. He said, well, you done lost all your life because this here boat's going to the bottom and, and we done learned. And I'm telling you, it didn't matter how much he knew. It didn't matter how educated he was. It didn't matter how much math. It didn't matter how much science. And I'm telling you this morning, are you listening? There'll be some times in your life when it does not matter how smart you are, what your IQ is, how good looking, how smart, how intelligent, how rich, how pretty, how important you are. Nobody but God can help you through some things you're going through. You young people better remember me telling you this because your time's coming. And some of you older folks are sitting there nodding your head the whole time. You've been there. You've been in the hospital room at night and, and waiting on the doctor to come out and give a bad report. You've seen them little, little zigzag things with a heart monitor. You've, you've watched a loved one die. You've, some of you have come in and found a note on the table. I don't love you no more. I don't want to be married no more. Rough. That's rough. Spend time, number three, with God. Spend time with God. I'll never forget one time I was going through a hard time, real hard time, and I felt like I was just about, I don't get like this very often, only a few times in my life, but I felt like I was that close just to cracking. Have you ever been there? And you feel like, I, I don't know if I can, I don't, I, I've, I'm that close to just flipping my lid. And I'll never forget, I went in my office up there in Marion, 
And I fell down on my face like this, and I started bawling. And I said, God, you're going to have to help me. You're going to have to help me. I can't go through this like, like I can't make it. I'm not strong enough. God, you're going to have to help me. And I'm telling you with my hand to heaven, I went down the hill, and within an hour, things begin to change. Honest to goodness, people. It was like the Lord said, all right, Danny, I, I know that's about all you can take. And I'm, you know, God lets us go through trouble to make us stronger and trust in Him and better. But He knows your limit. He knows what you can take. He ain't gonna put more on a swing stand. Glory to God, people. Trust in Him. Spend time with Him. He knows the answer. Now, let me tell you something. I've been counseling people long enough to know this. I'm gonna tell you something you may not know. But you can mark this down and take it to the bank. When people go through hard times, you mark my word, when your wife leaves you, when your husband leaves you, when you get a bad report, when something, you'll do one of three things. You're going to turn to something. You'll turn to God, or you'll turn to drugs, or you'll turn to another person. I've seen it a hundred times. When you go through hard time, everybody, you either turn to God, you'll turn to drugs and alcohol, or you'll turn to another human being. I've had plenty of men come in and say, my wife left me, Brother Danny, what am I going to do? My wife left me, what am I going to do? And I say, trust the Lord, and it ain't but about a week till they're out there chasing women in a bar somewhere to try to ease that hurt from their wife living. Big mistake. Big mistake. Turn to God. Turn to the Lord. Turn to the Lord. That's the way to get through it. That's the way to get through it. You say, well, she's cheating on me. Well, you're doing the same thing she is now. That puts you and her both in trouble with God. You'll turn to God, you'll turn to drugs, or you'll turn to another person. Everybody does it. One of them three. Never seen it fail yet. Spend time with God. They said, well, that's enough to make me lose my religion. It's enough to make you use your religion. Number three, four, whatever it is. Trust in his presence. You know what Paul told him out there? He said, there stood by me the angel of God tonight. He said, we're going to be all right, boys. I know the ship's being tossed, but we're going to make it. Man, what a blessing to have somebody like, isn't it a blessing to have somebody stand up and say, thank God we're going to be all right, y'all? Listen, the world, they're passing laws all the, all the time against what we believe. They're passing laws against everything you and I stand for. The world's about ready to drown churches. Churches everywhere are compromising just to get a crowd every, everywhere you go. But I'm going to stand up here and tell y'all, hey, he's still on the throne. He's going to get us through. We're going to make it. Hallelujah. The angel of God told me we're going to be all right. The Lord told me that. He'll be all right one of these days. Believe in his promises. There ain't nothing that's happened to you that ain't already happened to somebody else. You're not the first person to go through this. You're not the first Christian to go through this. As a matter of fact, if you look around a little bit, there's always somebody got a little bit worse than you do. So learn how to trust the Lord and his presence. And then let me say this. Count your blessings. Count your blessings. The Bible said in Acts chapter 27 verse 35. He gave God thanks in the presence of them all. Now imagine that. The ship's going like this. Bang. Running in the rock. Boom. Crash. Water coming in. Here's Paul saying. We sure do thank you Lord for this wonderful day. See he gave thanks right in the middle of it. Can you do that? Learn how to give thanks, not for it, in it. Every once in a while I meet some nut and said, well, uh, you know, we're supposed to be thankful for everything. No, 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 no. You're not to be thankful for everything. We are to be thankful in everything. Amen? If I wreck my car this evening, I'm not supposed to say, thank you, Lord, for that wreck. I, I, no, I'd be crazy. I'd be lying. I'm thankful for a wreck. 
but I'm thankful I didn't get killed. I'm thankful God had mercy on me. I'm, th I'm thankful in, at least I'm going to heaven where there'll be no wrecks. Amen? So be thank learn how to be thankful. No matter what you're going through this morning, learn how to be thankful in your problem. I, I mean, somebody said, well, who's that nut up there thanking God? Don't he know we're about to get killed? He was doing the right thing. If you're going through a problem this morning, just start thanking the Lord. Lord, you've been good to me. God, you sure have been good to me. And let that storm rage all around you and watch what happens. Amen. I don't know if that's helping you or this morning, but I see some people in here this morning getting some help. Hey, somebody in here needing this. Count your blessings. Count your blessings. By the way, I want to give you another truth. You are not responsible for other people's actions. You can't help what other people do. You are responsible for your reaction. You listen? Ed McAbee told me that 30-something years ago, and I never forgot it. You're not responsible for other people's actions. What anybody else does, that's between them and God. You're responsible for you, the way you react to it. You can't say, well... Good night, they done this, I'm going to do that. The way you react to it is what you're responsible for. The last thing I'll say and I'm through, get rid of excess baggage. They lighten the ship. All that unnecessary cargo, all that stuff they thought they needed. You listening? They got right with God and throwed it over. They said, my goodness, we brought all these cakes and oranges and stuff like that. Look, we're going to die. Get rid of them. They started throwing stuff overboard except what they absolutely had to have. And the one thing that trouble will do to your life, it'll make you take inventory and throw overboard a bunch of junk you don't need in your life. I knew a guy. I knew a guy that had real serious trouble. You know what he done? He got right with God at church. He went straight home. He had stacks of movies in his house. And he got every movie that was rated R, had anything bad in it, and threw it in a trash can. He didn't take it to a yard sale and sell it to somebody else so they could wash it. He threw it in the trash. He threw it overboard, buddy. Blam, blam, blam. And you know what trouble will do? It'll make you lighten the ship. Some of y'all might need to throw some stuff overboard. Trouble will do it to you. You think you need this, you need that, you need this, you need that. You don't, we don't need half what we think we do. Real trouble will make you realize what's really important and throw some stuff overboard. Ed McAbee told me this too, and I'll tell you this and I'm through. Trouble will do one of two things to you. It'll make you bitter or it'll make you better. You'll become a bitter person or you'll turn into a better person on how you react to it. I know people, I know people right now who are bitter. And every time I'm around them, it's just bitter, bitter, because something happened 20 years ago. And you know what he told me? He said, learn how to let your trouble make you a better person, not a bitter person. That's what you do when you're having trouble. Let's stand by our head for prayer.